Hi everyone, uh, we're going to get started. Um, if you can please mute your phones by either pressing mute on your cell phone or star six on a landline. And then if you have any questions, feel free to um, unmute and, and jump in at any time. So um, today's webinar is going to be about uh, selecting the right microscope for your um, age group or grade level. Uh, what we're going to do is go through the different types of microscopes and also um, after selection we'll go through a few cleaning tips and adjustment tips in case you have microscopes now that um, aren't working properly and maybe uh, you know with a few tips I can show you how to clean them and adjust them to get them working again in your classroom. So we're going to start with um, compound microscopes. Now, compound microscopes are um, for slides only. They're high magnification. Generally, a standard um, compound microscope will have a 4, 10, and 40x objective, which will give you magnifications of 40, 100, and 40. Uh, typically, that's all the magnification you will need from K through 10, maybe even K through 12th grade. And when you get um, to the higher levels, you may also need the 100x oil immersion, but we'll get to that after the elementary, elementary model. So what we have here is a elementary model. It is smaller than your standard microscope. If you can see side by side, you'll notice there's quite a difference in size. So it's better for the smaller students with smaller hands. This is typically good for kindergarten through sixth grade, but can uh, be used right up through eighth grade. So the benefits of it are, it's easier to use, it's smaller for the smaller students, um, and then a disadvantage would be that the optics are smaller also on it, so your field of view is gonna be a little smaller. But basically what you get is a 10X eyepiece, a 4, 10, and 40x objective, and you get your magnification by multiplying your objective by your eyepiece. And then there are a few different stage types. On our elementary models, we have the rotating stage, and what that does is, I don't know if you can, how clearly you can see, but instead of moving the stage with your stage clips, the stage itself rotates but the center of your slide will not rotate out of the field of view. So that's super handy for younger students who when you move the slide, it just zooms everything out of focus. This model is a cordless LED model, so it has a um, LED light pack. It just clicks into there, and then it, has a, it comes with a charging cord to charge that up. But the, the LED is nice because it never heats up and it lasts a really long time. So um, you don't have to worry about students burn, burning themselves and you rarely have to change the bulb. Um, one of the important things to know about microscopes is that magnification is fairly cheap. You can get it in, inexpensively, but uh, resolution that's how well the lenses distinguish the uh, distinguish what's on the slide. That is where your expense comes in. So um, you may have a a microscope with 410 and 40 and want to throw a 100x objective on there, but if you don't have the correct optics to go with it, you're not going to get resolution. So it's going to make it um, really a waste of money because you won't get a clear image. So the micro uh, the um, Elementary scopes, like I said, generally smaller, 410 and 40X. You can get them LED corded or cordless. They have the rotatable stage, stage clips. This model has coarse and fine adjustment, but a lot of the elementary models will just have a coarse focus knob. Are there any questions on elementary size? So then the next, model up would be a standard compound. 
And what you're going to get there is basically you have the same features of the elementary but on a larger scale. So you'll notice the, the eyepiece is a lot larger than on the smaller one. And what that does is it gives you a, a larger field of view or what you're seeing on the um, slide, like I like to use a flea as comparison. In a standard microscope under 4X, you'll see a whole flea on a slide. On an elementary model, you're, you're going to see just like a wing or a, a portion of that flea, maybe half of it. So you definitely get uh, a bigger image with the full-size microscope. The stage differences on the full size, this is a stationary stage, it doesn't move. Comes with stage clips. So when you want to adjust your slide under the microscope, you have to move it with your, um, move it with your hands, which again, sometimes that'll cause you to zoom it out of um, reach. You can get a mechanical stage for a standard microscope. And when I show you the advanced microscope, you'll see how the um, mechanical stage fits on there. So with your standard 410 and 40X microscope, on the stage, there's going to be a condenser. The standard condenser is a 0.65, and it's a single glass lens in the middle of the stage. It doesn't move. It's fixed in there. And your maximum magnification you're going to be able to get with that condenser is 650 times. So you multiply your condenser by 1,000, and that's your maximum magnification. So that goes back to where if you had this microscope and tried to add a 100x objective, you would not get a clear image because you don't have enough, um, a powerful enough condenser lens. So the condenser, there is also on an advanced model would look just like this, but it would all, it wouldn't have a fixed lens. You would have a two-piece lens underneath, similar to this, and it would move up and down, and it's a two-lens system condenser, and that's a 1.25, so you can use the 100X with that, and 100X always... Um, requires oil immersion. Other options for the compound microscope would be coarse focus or coarse and fine focus. Some microscopes have them on separate axis. This is called rack and pinion. And some will have it on the same axis. This is called coaxial. Uh, one is, no one is better than the other. It's just a matter of preference. So if you're switching from coarse to fine, you have to move your hands with the separate. And when you're switching on the coaxial, you just have to slide your hand out. So it's a little easier. But both work just as well, and it's really just a matter of, of preference. Um, different lighting options on all of them. You can get tungsten. You can get LED. There's corded and cordless options with the LED. Um, you can, so this is a monocular microscope, which means it has one eyepiece. You can get a uh, dual view, which would have this one going at a 40 degree angle. I'm going to move it away from me a little so you can see. And then it would have another one going straight up, either for a second person viewing or to add a camera. And then there's also binocular. Binocular viewing is more for advanced studies. You want to have a binocular head. Um, if you're going to be looking through the microscope for a long time, it uh, relieves eye strain. And that's only going to come on your higher end microscopes, the binocular. And typically, anytime you get a binocular, you're going to have a 410, 40, and 100x objective. You're going to have the 1.25 Abbey condenser, so you can use the higher magnification. You will have a built-in mechanical stage, which is a slide holder with its own XY axis, so you can 
find your image using that and you can mark it on the X, Y axis and always go to the same spot on the slide if you need to. It makes moving and um, handling the slide much easier. And you will all also get what's uh, called a rheostat or a dimmer. And what that does is controls the light uh, intensity coming through the microscope. Um, any questions on why you would get, or on the age group for the three microscopes, or um, any features you would need for certain labs or techniques? I have a question if which ones have a pointer in the eyepiece, and if they don't come with that by default, can you purchase that separately to add it up? Okay. Um, all the ones that we have here today are Boreal microscopes, and they do come with a pointer in the eyepiece if it's a monocular. Um, the eyepieces are held in by a set screw, and you would loosen the set screw and take it out. The pointer is located in here. If you don't want the pointer, you can unscrew it, remove the pointer out of there, and just screw it back together. Um, if you get a different model that doesn't have a pointer, we do sell pointers separately. You just need to know the diameter of your eyepiece, the inner diameter, and you could order those. So um, pointers are easy to add or take away. Binocular scopes don't generally come with a pointer because you would see it through one eyepiece and not the other because they would be in two different positions but you can buy a single eyepiece pointer for one or the other eyepieces. You wouldn't use two. Any other feature questions? What is the best scope option for a homeschooler? Homeschooler, your best option would most likely be a standard 410-40X full-size microscope. Um, these microscopes they're simple to use, they're durable, and really they, um, they can take you right up through 12th grade. Um, you need 100x objectives to view things like bacteria and, um, and some germs, but unless you're in AP, you really don't need the 100x objective, so a standard compound should get you straight through K-12. So the next kind of microscope is a stereo microscope. So a stereo microscope will have two eyepieces, but unlike the um, binocular, through the binocular you're getting the same image through both eyepieces, so it's just a flat image. Through the, bino or the stereo microscope, you're getting a different image th through each eyepiece, so you're actually getting a 3D image. So stereo microscopes have a lower magnification. They're not generally used for viewing slides, even though you can look at slides, but they're mostly for um, solid objects, three-dimensional objects, things that you want to look down on instead of see through. So the magnifications are always lower. Uh, typically, they're either 1x, 3x, or 2x, 4x which gives you 10 and 30 or 20 and 40x magnification. Uh, they're good for dissections, rock samples, plants, um, live specimens in petri dishes. Usually they, they will come with a translucent stage plate for things that you want to look through like butterfly wings and things like that. And they'll also have a black and white reversible stage plate for contrast on whatever solid objects you're looking at. They'll typically have a top light and a bottom light that you can use one or the other, or you can use them both simultaneously. Um, obviously, you're only gonna use the bottom light with the translucent stage plate and a see-through object. Uh, there's there. A stereo microscope will only have a coarse focus knob, no fine focus because the magnification is lower and, and the object is bigger, so you don't need that fine focus to bring things into a, a crisp image. This model has a post and clamp bottle, bo I 
excuse me, a post and clamp arm, which means you can loosen it and you can lower it and raise it to give you a bigger working distance on the microscope. So if you were to be looking at, say, a dollar bill, you might want to put this really low to get a close image. But if you were looking at a stone, you might want to raise it up higher to have a better field of view. And you, it also gives you the option of turning it over away from the stage. So if you're doing a dissection or you're looking at something a lot larger, you can move the microscope to the corner of the table. I don't know if you can see how I did that. You can turn the eyepieces around, set the microscope on the corner of the table down at something down here. So you can view much larger things for, like I said, like dissections or larger samples. Any questions on stereo microscopes or what you would use them for? Okay, so the next thing we're gonna go to is um, digital microscopes, digital options. Uh, so digital microscopy is where there's a camera either integrate, integrated into your microscope or added onto, and it gives you the um, benefit of um, showing the whole class what you're looking at. So you know that everybody's looking at the same thing. Um, it's great for special needs students who have a hard time working a regular microscope. And um, it's good for creating authentic assessments, adding inquiry to labs, and just basically engaging the students through technology because when they get to play with the software and bring the um, image up on their iPad or on their computer. It's, it's always more engaging and, and it's actually, it's a lot of fun with the software. We have um, three options on how you can use or get digital on your microscope. The first one would be a built-in digital camera. And this is where the camera is built right into the microscope. USB plug is in the back of the microscope and you plug it into your computer. That's going to bring the, you can still see the image through your eyepiece, but you're also going to see it on your computer screen, which can then um, be transferred to a smart board or um, even iPhones and iPads, depending on the kind of camera you get, um, LCD projectors. So the first type built into the head. The benefit of that is it's, uh, it's safe, it's solid, it's all one unit, and you don't have to worry about losing anything. Uh, you can use the microscope as a regular microscope, a digital microscope, or both ways as you're using it. Um, so that's the first way. The second way is if you already have microscopes, but you, um, you wanna add digital, but you can't afford to buy digital microscopes. So there are cameras that will fit on top of the eyepiece. So what I have here is a Modicam and it comes with different adapters. So it will fit on a compound microscope, a stereo microscope, any microscope. It has two adapters that fit between the two of them, like 95% of all microscopes. But so it has a little adapter. You would just put it over the eyepiece, screw it on there, and then it would do the same thing. You would plug the USB into your computer and then that can go to your smart board or your projector. The disadvantage of a Modicam camera or any camera that goes on the eyepiece is that now you can't see through your eyepiece. It's all strictly camera and you have to do all your focusing and everything on the computer screen. Um, unless you have the dual view that I mentioned earlier with a separate camera port or a trinocular mount, which would be the binocular scope with a separate port for a camera here. But, so that's the disadvantage, but the advantage is that you can take one camera and you can use it on your compound, on your stereo. They come with a macro cup, so you can use it as a standalone. There's gooseneck, um, gooseneck holders available so you can um, 
use it as a document camera. So they're very versatile, um, which I think that kind of outweighs losing the eyepiece, looking through the eyepiece. But And a typical um, Motocam camera starts at about $239. So you can really use it in several classrooms with several scopes at not a very high price. And then the latest in technology on um, digital microscopes is tablets. So I have this binocular advanced scope that I was showing you. And it's a trinocular head because it has an extra port up here. So what I can do is we sell them where they come with a tablet with the software and camera in it. And the camera simply fits into the trinocular port. And you turn on the microscope. So basically what this does is whatever you're looking through on the microscope, you would then see on the screen. So that way you can, six or eight kids can gather around, everybody can see the same thing. When you have the image on the screen, um, you can then capture it. Once it's captured, you'll be able to um, measure, annotate. Uh, you can send it to the SD card or you can send it to your email. It gives you a, a lot of options for saving the images. You can take, um, you can capture still images, you can do time lapse in images, you can do videos. And I apologize, but my camera is dead or I would show you what was under the microscope, but they all come with the, my uh, tablet is what's, what's dead. They all come with the Modic software. Um, some of them are, this is not a Wi-Fi, but we have Wi-Fi tablets available and you can hook up to six devices at once um, to a single microscope. So whatever would be on this tablet, you could also, um, five other people could put it on their tablets or on their cell phone, iPhone, at Android, and it'll uh, pick that up. So any questions on digital? One teacher who comments that they're not too tech savvy and worry about that they'll, that they'll struggle struggle to install the camera correctly. Is there any kind of assistance that comes with the camera if they need help? So the digital, whether you get a digital microscope, uh, add-on camera, or a tablet, they all come with Modic Images software. It's a, a disc. So once that's installed. Um, it installs the drivers, it installs the software, puts an icon on your desktop, and usually it's problem free, you would just start it up. But with schools, a lot of times you don't have um, the proper rights or some component that you need has been removed from your computer. So we do have um, tech support with Modic tech support. We have um, a place in Vancouver, Canada for tech support, we have a place in Houston, Texas, and also I can do tech support on getting your drivers and your software installed and also walking you through any program. So um, we have a lot of uh, resources for that. But it, it's usually, uh, like I said, it's straightforward plug and play device and we have very few um, operating issues. Any more questions on digital? Okay, so the second half was just um, to go through a, a couple cleaning tips and uh, common problems that you might be having with your microscope. I will tell you before we get started that um, we do have a cleaning and troubleshooting um, webinar on our YouTube page. and. Uh, That'll come up on the screen for you. It's a one hour video and it walks you through taking your microscope apart, cleaning all the lenses and uh, making adjustments. But 
A couple of the most common ones we'll run through here because you know you might not want to look at an hour long video. <laughs> so the first problem you might run into is your field of view is not complete. Meaning that you're looking through your microscope and there's like a half moon or um, you can't see your whole image. The first and most obvious thing to check is if you have a disc diaphragm on your microscope, which I think this one does. Yeah. So the disc diaphragm is the series of holes on a wheel that you just turn. Turn that and, and make sure that it's clicked into, a, into the hole in the right spot. Sometimes if you have it halfway between one and the other, you'll get that half moon. That's the simplest thing to look for. And then the next thing that you might look for is when you click your objectives into place, behind your nose piece, there's gonna be a little click stop. Sometimes that'll get off center. So what you wanna do is while you're looking through your microscope, if you have that little half moon, kind of wiggle your objective out of the groove a little back and forth until it, and see if you get a full field of view. If you notice you get a full field of view and it's not clicked into the spot where it needs to be, that little tab can be moved over to the left or right to line it up. So those are the two, two things that normally will obstruct your field of view. Um, if you run into the issue where one or more of your objectives will not focus, okay, that's good. Uh, one or more objectives will not focus. The first thing to do is just check them all and make sure they're screwed in tight. Another thing that might affect that is your eyepiece. I had showed you earlier that it unscrews. If it's not screwed completely together, it messes with the distance between the eyepiece and the end of the objective, and that will cause you to have trouble focusing. So make sure your eyepiece is screwed completely together, and make sure all your objectives are screwed in place. But more commonly than that, it is the stage stop is not um, set correctly on your microscope. So behind your stage, there's going to be a little screw, and it's either going to be a thumb screw or an Allen screw. These ones have Allen screws, so they're kind of hard to see. I can see it here a little better. It's an Allen screw, and uh, what it does is it controls how high up your stage will go so that you don't smash your um, slide on the higher power objectives. So if you're trying to focus and it seems like your scope just needs to come up a little more, your stage, what you would do is you would back that screw out one turn at a time while you're focusing on 4X. And you would just, like I said, one turn at a time, try to focus. If it's not coming in, do it another turn. Once it focuses on 4X, it should be set for the whole microscope. Check it on 10 and 40. Make sure it doesn't hit the slide when you're all the way up and it should be good. So that's all you need to do is just back out that screw behind the stage. Um, I also have, um, I mentioned the video, but we have a um, cleaning and troubleshooting guide that if anybody is interested in that, our science help people can send that to you. And it has all the troubleshooting and the steps to fix it and cleaning um, cleaning tips and stuff like that. So it's, it's about a 20 page booklet and it really tells you just about everything you need to know about making your adjustments. Um, if your course focus won't move, a lot of times you'll go to move your focus, your stage, and it's just stuck. There is a tension collar. I know you can't really see it well here, but on your course focus, on one side of the rod, there's gonna be a little collar on there. And it's a tension ring. And what that does is controls how smooth, how um, hard or easy it is to move the stage up and down. 
you should have, with most microscopes, there's what's called a um, C-wrench. And it's just a little wrench that has a hook in it. You would hook that point into one of the holes in the tension collar. And what that'll do is either loosen or tighten it. So one way will tighten, one way will loosen. So if your stage won't move, you want to, you know, use your little wrench and turn that ring until it moves freely and then start moving your course focus. And then, you know, one way will loosen, one way will tighten. And all you have to do is get it till it feels easy to move, but it doesn't slide right down. Um, if you don't have this wrench, you can use something like a, a, just a pointed object to get that loosened up and start moving it. So if it's too tight, you're definitely going to need a tool to get it to loosen up. But if it's not tight so it won't move at all, it moves a little bit, sometimes you can just get in there and finger tighten or loosen that. But that tension collar on the side of the course focus knob is, gonna, is what's going to control moving up and down this stage. And that's the same if the image drifts out, you want to tighten it. It's not um, one way to tighten, one way to loosen. It's different on different microscopes. So you're just going to have to, you know, try it to see if it's backwards or forwards for tightening and loosening. So those are the, the most two, three most common things that are wrong with the microscope. Um, if you have other things that are wrong that you need to know about, you can ask now or you can, my information will be up at the end. You can call or email me and I can help you make any other adjustments you might have. Um, some basic rules for care. Uh, dust is like the number one enemy of a microscope. So whenever you're not using it, you're gonna wanna keep it covered. Uh, most come with a dust cover, but if not, I've used um, Ziploc bags. Just put a big bag over it. Keep it covered, keep the dust off. Uh, your objectives, they should be cleaned off um, maybe once a month. It could be even every couple of months, depending on how much you use them. If you're just using prepared slides and there's no dyes and no stains, I mean, what you can do is just, you know, make it like once a month, you put a little lens cleaner on a piece of lens to, uh, tissue paper and just leave them on the microscope, wipe, you know, run through it, wipe them off, kind of wipe your eyepiece off, put the cover on it and put them away. Um, it's the important thing about cleaning your lenses, be it the eyepiece or the objectives, is you only want to use lens paper because it's 100% grit free and you want to use a lens cleaning solution. You can use a 50% dilute Windex solution, um, but definitely only use the lens paper because Kim wipes, they're like 80% grit free, but if you're washing your eyepiece and you scratch it, it's scratched for good. So um, the only option then there is to replace the eyepiece. So you wanna make sure you always use lens paper, lens cleaner and uh, or 50% dilute Windex. For the body of the microscope, it's mostly metal or plastic pieces. So you can use anything. Um, you can use soap, you can use a washcloth, you can use Kim wipes, you can use paper towels. Uh, you can use citrus cleaner when you have ink or glue to get off. The important thing to remember is start at the top, wipe it down, and if you're using anything but lens paper and lens cleaner, just avoid any lenses, including your condenser lens. So you just would start, wipe it off. You can do all the scrubbing you need to. Um, you're really not gonna hurt the outside of the microscope at all. Just make sure you avoid any glass parts with anything but the lens cleaner. And I think that's all I got except for questions. One question if I need more than a basic cleaning and need more of a repair, is there a specialized shop I can go to? So if you have Boreal microscopes and they need a repair, um, they have a lifetime warranty. You contact us, we pay shipping both ways, 
We'll bring it in, we'll fix it and ship it back to you and it won't cost you anything. If you have another model um, that doesn't have that warranty, I usually recommend just going to Google and putting in microscope service and, and your city or city or zip code. And generally three or four will pop up for each area. Said all our scopes come with the covers? All of ours do. So all the most major brands do come with the cover. Um, we do have uh, small, medium, and large covers sold separately. And like I said, Ziploc, big Ziploc bags work just as well as a microscope cover. So you can get a box and cover all your scopes for, you know, $4. Can you go into some more details on how the cordless models work? So the cordless models have, um, in the base they have a battery pack and it's three AA rechargeable batteries. Um, they're nothing special. If the ba I mean, they'll charge hundreds of times. When they stop charging, you can go to any drugstore and, and just get the right batteries. The only thing that you have to be sure of is that they're the 1.2 volts or whatever your microscope takes. But So they all come with a charger. The charger has um, an automatic shutoff, so you can't overcharge it. And really, on a full charge, uh, you'll get up to 80 hours of use on a single charge. So once it gets an eight hour charge, you should be able to use the microscope 80 hours without recharging it. But if you do need to use it, you can use and charge it at the same time. So, um, I mean, you're not out a microscope if you forget to charge it. You can just plug it in and use it while it's charging. we offer any package deals or discounts? So we do, um, I mean, if you're ordering more than five microscopes, um, normally we can turn that into um, our bid team and there's definitely discounts. We also have, right now we are running a special, actually on this microscope here, it's a buy five, get one free, and it's running through now. It was ran through 2017 and will run through 2018, but it's buy five, get one free. And we also have a special um, buy one and get a free slide set on this model. And then on our stereo microscope, we have the same, same deal. We have a buy five, get one free, or buy one, get a free fossil collection kit. So those are both on the website under promotions. And uh, you can, um, if you can't find them on the website, again, feel free to contact Science Help or myself and, and I can let you know item numbers for that. Any more questions? Okay, so, um, if you would like a copy of the presentation um, or a copy of the uh, troubleshooting and care guide that we have, please uh, contact Science Help and they'll send that to you. I also have a um, how, to, how to select the right microscope, choosing a microscope guide. We can send you the uh, copy of that. It's just a Word document, but it, it tells you about uh, resolution and magnification and um, you know, what to look for when buying a microscope. Or if you want product information on any of our compound, stereo, or digital products, um, again, email Science Help or myself and uh, we'll certainly get your questions answered. And on the last sheet of the presentation, if you do ask for a copy of that, any of the microscopes that you're seeing here today um, are on there as well as the lens cleaning solution if you need that for cleaning. All right, if there's no more questions, um, we're going to hang up on our end, but uh, 
feel free to contact us if you think of anything uh, later. One quick last Wait. question. Is there any way to try any of our microscopes? Uh, we do have um, on our Boreal line of microscopes, we do have a 30-day preview policy. So if you see a microscope that you want to try but you're or that you want to buy but you're not sure, uh, we will send it to you free for 30 days. At the end of 30 days, if you want it, we will invoice you. If you don't, we'll send you um, a prepaid UPS call tag to get it back again at no charge. So you would do this by contacting customer service. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a nice night. Thank you.